Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Faith Homestead Podcast. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. And thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ohio train derailment. We're going to be talking about preparedness for emergency situations like the Ohio train derailment. And we're going to be talking about just some basic things that you need to kind of consider before disaster strikes. So if you guys could please like, share, subscribe, wherever you are listening, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. So do you want to get us started today, hon? Yeah, and I think the the video for us today really stemmed from a lot of the reaction through social media. Mm. Um, because I think a lot of the major media um, platforms haven't really covered what's actually going on with it. You know, we've seen really brief, you know, hey, you know, they burn off the the chemicals from this train and they moved on to their next story. Mm -hmm. And they haven't talked at all about any of the people living in that area. No. It's it's scary, you know, that there are there are a large, large group of our population there living in in those those areas and the area is now affected due to not only the burn off, but the water runoff and everything else that nobody's at, is discussing at all yeah and we thought it was something that was important and and fell right in line with how we look at and how we approach life yeah and i think something important to note is preparedness in general it's not just for you know the doomsday apocalypse which is what a lot of people think when they think of people that are prepared and preppers preparing is for every day these people were given a few hours notice that they had to collect their belongings and leave. And to be completely honest, I know for a fact that once Matt would have known the chemicals that were being released into the waterways and into the air, he would have not have let us return. Nobody should be in that area still. And so a lot of people on social media are, are very upset because they have, they have now come to learn about the chemicals. I mean, just one of the chemicals. Okay, one of the chemicals is called it once it's burned is then turned into phosgene. Phosgene was I, I think I'm saying it correctly. Phosgene w was a chemical agent that was used in World War One to gas out the enemy. Okay, and that is what was being burned into the atmosphere and is still go. There's the smoke. I mean, it's now heading east. We're in Pennsylvania, so we're not, we are like very on the east coast of Pennsylvania. So we have quite a ways from Ohio where the accident happened, but it is traveling. I, I tested our water this week. We had a rainstorm and I'm sure people thought I was crazy, but I posted to social media and a lot of people that didn't think I was crazy were like, please let us know, let right. us know. And I wasn't expecting to really have an answer, especially because if I want to pay to have all those chemicals tested, I would have to, you know, take the sample to an environmental agency, pay a lot of money. But I knew that it was pretty basic to just mm -hmm. check the pH. Okay, pH is something that I have, and I I have pH strips that I use for canning. And because I'm, I mean, people were actually like correcting me on social media because I was like, sorry, uh, if you saw the video, um, it's on TikTok and on Facebook. But they were like, don't say that you're a weirdo because you use pH strips to test your canning jars. Because every time I open a jar uh, that I can, I, I test it with a pH strip just to make sure because I have little kids that we're all eating it. And I want to make sure I don't kill my family with botulism. And I know for a fact that the canning that I do is it is by the book and it's USDA. You know, I follow all the rules. But because I am a little bit of, um, I have a little bit of a, a, a like a scaredy cat mentality, and so I do that. And people were like, "Don't call yourself weird." But I have those strips; they're super cheap. You can actually get them. I have them linked in our Amazon storefront, which I'll put in the description if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, but I took some. I took <laughs> I took a ball jar, put a funnel, a canning funnel on it, set it outside during rainstorm. I collected about a half inch half inch of water. And I tested the pH strip and it was only 6.5, which is perfectly fine. I mean, I think neutral water is seven. So it's like totally fine. Um, and I told everybody that it was totally fine. And that was a very non-scientific method of, of taking a water sample. But I know that next rainfall in two weeks, if I test it again and it is like super acidic, I know that the Ohio chemicals have reached us here in Pennsylvania where we live. 
And so I was taking the initiative to protect my family. And we also have a Berkey water filter. If you're not um, familiar with Berkey, it is an amazing filtration system. They are currently out of stock and they probably will not be in stock for many months since this disaster. But this is why we prepare. We prepare for everyday things. These people, again, had very little time to get out of their house. What would you grab? You know, people were grabbing things like electronics and like your TV is not going to save you. Your, 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 your radio, like your, you know, your eye, like all these electronics, your laptops, they're not going to save you. And I understand it's nice to have electronics for when you get somewhere, but you do not need a big screen TV when you're evacuating. Um, things that you need, you know, you should have things like your, your birth certificates and social security cards and some emergency cash in a, in one spot ready to grab. If you have to leave in an emergency, you should have things that are super valuable to you. Things that are irreplaceable. Like, you know, uh, you know, most people don't really print pictures anymore, but if you have old, you know, antique or heirloom photos at this point from your family, have those in an area. You need to have things that are important, emergency food, mm-hmm. Um, you know, all those things. So, and a lot of people are really upset because they can't go back to their homes. And if they are going back because the government is actually telling them it's okay to go back, which it's really not, um, they are, they're the ones who have researched and know what these chemicals are now. They're saying, well, what are we supposed to do? We are in our homes. We're afraid to, we're afraid to even shower in this flammable water. It's poisoning our, our livestock. Our chickens are dropping dead. The fish in the, in the creeks and the ponds are just dead. Everything is dying, but we have to stay here because we don't have the money to get out. We don't have the money to get out. That these people don't even have money for a hotel or, you know, anything. And we understand that it, it, we are in hard times, but if you didn't have 500 to 1,000 plus in car payments, if you weren't living above your means and living in, in having mortgages that were more than you could afford, if you didn't have thousands and thousands of dollars in credit card debt and were not living from paycheck to paycheck, you would be in a better position to evacuate and to get your family to a safe location. Absolutely. You know, I thought it was interesting when you put your post out on social media, you talked about how many people wanted to know results. Yes. Yes. All of those people could have done the same exact thing and known the results of of their water, but they didn't. They were waiting for you to publish your results to better inform them, which I think which is, is why, why we're it's doing important this. that which we is why have we're doing this. these conversations um, on a weekly basis. Uh, this mm-hmm. this entire concept really started from you and I having these conversations and and yeah. realizing that. Other people should know. You know, these conversations, I think, are beneficial not only for us, but I think for other people as well. And being mm-hmm. being self-reliant, you know, we you showed me several videos this week of people saying that they didn't know how they were going to have water that was going to be drinkable. Mm-hmm. They didn't know how they were going to get food. They didn't understand. They were they couldn't understand why the federal government wasn't coming in with FEMA aid and why they were blocking the governor's uh, request for aid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and the the um, the mindset immediately after an emergency was please help. You know, the government will come and help me. Mm-hmm. Or it was anger and it's we're suing the government. Right. And I just want to let you know, I mean, if if you are listening and you're in that area and you are thinking like you're going to sue the government, that's all well and good, but just so you know, it could take years to sue the government. And you may not ever see a penny. And what are you going to do in the meantime? What's your plan? What is your plan? If you don't have a plan for, you know, scenarios that can affect your family, you need to start now. You need to start now. And I think that it's important to know that having a plan doesn't mean that you have a, you know, an underground bunker somewhere no. ready to go to or... Um, you know, stockpiling all kinds of guns and MREs. I think that the the truth of it is, is that if something like that happened in our area, we have a plan for what to do. Mm-hmm. We also have a contingency plan when, if our plan that we we have set in place yeah. is not usable. Yeah. So that and that's the example of what would have what would have helped in this situation. And you don't need to be 
you know, super rich to have a backup plan. So let's say you lived in Ohio and you were affected by this disaster, but you had a family member in a different state or relatives in a different state. You might not be super close to those relatives, but you might want to have a conversation and say, hey, we just wanted to, we're just trying to, you know, get our ducks in a row and have a contingency plan. We have Mm -hmm. kids. We want to make sure that we're safe. If, If something ever happens in our state, would we be able to pack up our car and head in your direction? And vice versa, right? If, if something happened in their location yeah. and they needed to leave, would you be that place for them to land Have a buddy. during I an emergency? And it sounds silly, but it, it isn't silly. Have a buddy system. You should have a, a like we, if, if something happens where we live, we have the plan in place to pack up our vehicle with all the things that we need in an, just in an emergency situation evacuation plan. And we will be getting in our car and heading to a location where we have a camper that we paid for, that is paid off, that we have worked really hard for. And I know everybody can't do that, but that is something that we mm-hmm. have done because of the importance to it in our lives. Right, and I think it's weighing out the importance of these things. It's time to to start really getting into the mindset and and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Absolutely. The things that are coming now. um, It's every hour. Whether that be, you know, (laughs) balloons flying over our country or, uh, you know, these train derailments, which there have been several now. Yeah. Our, our, Our train transportation system in this country obviously has flaws. It's failing. And... If we are solely reliant upon all of these other outside sources for things to happen, we are going to continue to be in these situations where we're we're waiting for FEMA to come with a, a granola bar and a blanket and say it's going to be yeah, okay. Yeah, and a bottle of Tide and saying, go ahead, go wash your clothes. Like, And we don't have to. No. We don't need to be reliant upon those things for us to be successful in the case of an emergency. Yeah. I can remember, you know, before we really took this journey as serious as we do now, I can remember every snowstorm going to the grocery store with the hordes of other people. Mm -hmm. I can remember when the hurricanes came through and we lost power for an extended period of time. Do you want to know what I did in that situation? Because we were not preppers at the time, but we still had the bug in our head. Because, but we weren't, we weren't really prepared. But what I did when I, when we found out that the hurricane was coming through and we were going to lose power, I called, I don't know, 20 Ace Hardwares within the state of Pennsylvania and found one, what was it, two, two and a half hours mm-hmm. away. And I drove, I think it was Starlight PA. If I'm, I, I don't know if that's right, but don't, don't mark, don't hold me accountable for that. But I think it was Starlight PA that I drove to. This Ace Hardware was in the middle of nowhere. And I got a generator overpriced, but we did it because I knew that I, I had I had a deep freezer. We were living at my brother's house at the time, and we had a deep a deep freezer and a regular fridge freezer. And I didn't I did not want to lose all that venison and all the stuff that we had in there. So I drove out and I spent a ton of money. And that generator kept our we had a space heater going. We had. I I remember buying like 600 feet of extension cord, all these gas cans, um, because we weren't prepared. Right. And but that that was a horrible way to go about things. Mm-hmm. And I was very lucky that I was able. I mean, they were they were taking generators off a of giant like tractor trailer so I, yeah. and putting them in the car. And when I got there, I was like, oh, sorry, I ordered a Generac. And they're like, you can take this uh, Briggs Stratton or you can leave. And I was like, oh, I'll take it. <laughs> and they like threw this completely different generator than I wanted. It's actually been a very reliable, amazing yeah, generator. Is it called Brig- Briggs Stratton? Yeah, it's a Briggs and Stratton it's motor amazing. on it. Um, and again, I think that that mindset, right? We learned it, a lot that day. We, we pretty quickly realized that, um, you know, a lot of people locally were showering at the high school. Yes. They were, they were going getting down FEMA and getting buckets. buckets from FEMA with shovels and rake, all kinds of different things. And Plungers it, and it mops. It just was, it opened our eyes up, I think, a lot more. I think that was the beginning of our prep journey. <laughs> what do we, what does it actually look like to yeah. not be one of those people just standing yeah. there going, I'm, I'm Please helpless. Help me. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Yeah. Where now, I think that if something like this were to happen, we have plans. We have, you know, another backup type plan yep. that if it really comes down to it, you know, we we have the ability to 
to leave this area and, and really, you know, not have to come racing back. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And I think something to think about too. So, okay. So what, do, what, do, okay. You're listening to us and you're not, you've never prepped before. So Sarah, Matt, what do we, t- like, what is it? What do you have? What do I need to pack? So there's different types of things that you can pack. The first thing is if you cannot leave with a car, you are going to be walking wherever you're going. Something has happened to be, cause you have to plan. You have to plan these different scenarios. So you have no vehicle. You might have like a a, a wagon or a cart, something that you can find in your garage. You need to have backpacks. Every member of your family should have a backpack with emergency gear for them only. Okay, so if you have a five-year-old, that backpack should only be heavy enough that that five-year-old can carry. Extra clothes, things that are light, you know, granola bars, like trail mix, things like that. As the person gets bigger and older, they can carry more things. You want to have things that are important. Thing You obviously can't all carry gallons of water with you. So buy life straws or stuff like that. You can get them um, on Amazon. We'll link them, them in our, our, our Amazon storefront if you want to buy them. You can get uh, Sawyer, Sawyer straws, things that you can literally just go to any body of water that is dirty, put the straw in the water and drink, and you're getting filtered water that is safe. Obviously, it's not perfect, okay? Like, nothing is going to be perfect. Carry some water purification tablets, a little tiny bottle of of pure bleach, not the splash less, but pure disinfectant bleach. Like, they sell, like, little bottles that are, like, eight ounces at, like, the dollar store. Take one of those so you can purify your water. It's, like, two drops of, two droppers of bleach per a gallon of water. Mm -hmm. Things like that. You know, you really need to start thinking about, like, matches, lighters, things that are going to get you from where you're at to point B. If you can take your car, make sure you have extra gas cans that, that either have gas or that are empty so you can fill them. I mean, everybody everybody is going to be at the gas stations trying to get gas. So have backup, have gas. Gas lasts for a few months before it starts breaking down so you can rotate it. Like we have with our working pantry, we rotate everything. So if you have gas cans that you fill in July, you better be going through those and refilling them every few months so they're not breaking down, things like that. You know, we really want you to understand that you cannot rely on the government. You cannot. Absolutely. And I think that we're... We're seeing that. We're heading into times that I think are going to be even more challenging than Mm -hmm. what they are right now. Yeah, financially, like... Uh, Yeah. (laughs) You know, I just came back from the the grocery store... Um, you know, even going through just the, the fresh produce section of it and noticing how much of that doesn't get grown here, mm. right? And and if you had to remove everything from outside of this country in our grocery stores, our grocery stores would look a heck of a lot different. Yeah, it's really a time and, to garden. And we're going to be in the next couple of weeks. We actually just took our we have in two indoor greenhouses i'm going to be spending the next two weeks starting hundreds and hundreds of seeds um and we are going to be growing them and we're going to take you through that entire process you are going to understand exactly what you need to do to grow your own food because you need to start growing your own food back um what war was it that people had victory gardens do you remember world war ii yeah, so if you look up World War II and you look up Victory Gardens and you look up uh, like chicken keeping back during World War II, mm-hmm. the government at that point... I think the ad that you actually showed me the other day was World War One, where was they it? said everybody should okay. have Okay, a... so World War One, So and the, the, the chicken ad was like, everybody, it is it is America's, American citizens' duty to keep chickens. That was how the government used to talk about its citizens, that it was our duty to raise our own livestock. And now, in most places, if you're listening right now, in most places, it is illegal to have chickens in your backyard. I mean, look at your ordinances in the in the county in this in the in the borough in the you know area that you live. We used to be a a a nation that was founded on 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 freedom and, and working hard for your to, you know to get places and and working hard for your family. And now we are being like we are being crushed and not able to do those things. Um, like, you know, people had victory gardens back during that war and they planted all this food. So it took the burden off of the government be having to supply its citizens with fresh food. And now they don't want you to grow gardens and have chickens. They want you to wait in a line with a, with a bag and collect food and and stuff from them. Guys, you really need to open your eyes and think about it. It's backwards. It's not normal. And I think that we, as, uh, as the, the, the populace of this country, 
have gotten far too comfortable mm-hmm. with them dictating how and what we what we do in a self reliance from a self reliance standpoint. Yep. Um, I, I think that people need to start really focusing in on you know relying more upon ourselves we don't the government's not going to be there to help us exactly the way we want to be helped in a time of an emergency yeah they they don't even help us when we have you know things that are are non-emergencies why would we expect all of a sudden they're going to step up and they're going to be there and be that answer for us Mm -hmm. and we've seen more and more the the food prices going through the roof and as much as the the current administration wants to tell you about their lowering gas prices, they are they still have yet to come close to gas prices prior to their administration. So it's all spinning this story and 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 slanting it to make it seem like we're doing good. We're we're on the the recovery path, and we're not. Yeah, yeah. And I think I guess I guess really the my personal take home message, and I, I think you would probably agree with this is really, it really comes down to what are you willing to give up every single day to put yourself and your family in a situation where you have a contingency plan? Because right now, the majority of you are not doing it. Absolutely. And I hate, I hate, I, I was talking to him about this before we started. Like, I was like, we're going to, we're going to upset a lot of people on this, on this podcast mm-hmm. episode today. But this is why we're doing this. Everybody I've talked to who, who, who I'm friends with, who, who knows that we're doing this now, they're like, we're really thankful that you're doing this because no one wants to talk about it. And we are here because we know that we know what it takes to start doing this. And we are, we are, we don't even, we're working every single day. Every single day we give up things to be able to have a contingency plan. Mm-hmm. We don't, I mean, how, I mean, I, here's the challenge for you. I would like you to personally in the, in the last 14 days go through your banking and whatever cash that you spent and add up how much you bought with food that was not from the grocery store. Any takeout food, any Starbucks, and add all those things up and mm-hmm. see how much you spent on food that you didn't prepare at home and let me know if you're willing to go up, give up those things so you can have a contingency plan because That's right it. now nobody is doing it. How many streaming services do we have? I mean, it, it just blew my mind that people were taking to social media to voice their frustration about how they couldn't do anything to help themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's really sad, so too, because there's people that are to, crying. It's, it is really sad. You were willing to have the internet, and you were willing to have the phone and the app to record. And the $500 and, car payment. Uh, you were willing to pay for all these other things, but to help yourself, in the case of an emergency here, we weren't really... I'm not really willing to help myself there. Mm-hmm. I, because it, it's not it, convenient. It doesn't make sense it's not convenient, me. and it's not easy. You know, you know, living below your means is not, it's not easy. And a lot of the time it's not fun, but we know Mm -hmm. that we have goals to be completely debt free because when you are completely debt free, the burden that comes off of your shoulders and that you're able to be like, wow, we don't, everything that we made this month besides basic utilities is ours. It's ours to keep. And we can put that towards whatever we need. You know, we, we have a dream of having having a larger a larger um, acreage and having a homestead one day. We are working every single day to pay off our current mortgage mm-hmm. so we can have that. And I think that, you know, diving into self reliance Sunday here. Oh yeah. I think it's Sunday. It's something that's worth doing and it and really listing out looking at how much money are we spending on a monthly basis right we started early on in this and how Mm -hmm. much money is actually going out the door but let's take that one step further and let's create the list of things that we're willing to give up and things that we're not yeah and let's really i think it will open up eyes Mm -hmm. when you look at things that you're not willing to give up and why like are you not willing to give up your your your, you know 180 dollars a month sports package i'm looking at you um, um, if you're not if you're not on YouTube, I'm I'm right close to the microphone. I'm talking to you. Are you not willing to give up your $180 cable bill because you need to watch sports? I'm hitting nerves, aren't I? It's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah, and I think that if if you and I think you know this isn't us saying that we've you know we've eliminated everything. I think that no, we haven't. We 
we sit down and we look at it going, do we really need this? I mean, just yeah. last month we looked at, Which, okay, Disney. do we really need to have all of these streaming we services? We got rid of Disney and it's been a and little bit difficult for our kids. Yeah, they the understand. kids struggled a little bit with it, they you know, but they have other means of, of being able to have something to watch on, on YouTube the television. YouTube is their friend. And, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, I have friends that have the YouTube that they pay for so they don't have the ads and I'm like, Really? Like, it's so Nobody much money every single month going out the door. It's time to start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, it's all comfortability. Like, we just need to be able to get over it, to be honest. And I think that as you as you take on this, this journey a little bit more, you start to realize that there are other people out there that are following a similar path you start mm-hmm. to build you find them. some really good relationships and <laughs> yeah, friendships with people that you start to you know realize that you one you're not alone but two you have other people that you can then bounce yeah. these things off of it is so right? comforting we we have our uh, a podcast and a youtube channel so we are, are are a part of the the thing that we're saying you know is not a great thing yep. but the truth of it is is that the largest majority of people finding this kind of content right now is going to be through an online platform more yep. than it's going to be through, you know, a local group somewhere. Yeah. And most of those people in the local group are watching us and think we're we're pretty dumb and this is, you know, getting them nowhere, right? Yep. And this ne- this isn't really necessarily directed towards them. Yeah, it's you not. You know, this is, this is us trying to be there to, one, get some ideas out, but to provide that feedback for people that maybe – don't do any of this now but want to learn more want to dive into this more because i don't think that i'm an expert in any means in any field of you know self-reliance and preparation and and all of that stuff i i i think that we always learn Mm -hmm. there is always something to be learned if you've done something a thousand times there is something to be learned on the next Mm -hmm. time you do it so we continue to learn on this journey and if we can help some people along the way that pick up some of these ideas, it's only going to be it's only going to lead to a, a better populace here in our country, keeping our country what it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's great. Well, guys, we really thank you for joining us today. We will be back next Sunday and we hope you have a wonderful, blessed week. Have a great day.